Good afternoon, this is Quintus Curtius, and welcome back to Fortress of the Mind. And the subject of this podcast is going to be You Don't Know the Other Man's Struggles, or You Don't Know What Other Men Are Going Through. And I got the idea to do this podcast from an experience that I had earlier this week, just a few days ago, with a couple of my clients at work a few of my clients at work. And I'll tell you the story, and you can draw your own conclusions from it. Or I guess I'll draw the conclusions I think we should draw from it. But to make a long story short, I have a, a couple of clients, and they're a, they're a couple, husband and wife. And, you know... They came to me, obviously, with some financial issues, and it's my job to help them take care of that. And, um, you know, I noticed that the husband was a little bit more standoffish and suspicious than normal. And originally, I didn't think very much of it because I know that just from doing this for the past 16 years, um, you start to see patterns and you notice that when people have to come and see a lawyer about financial issues, usually they're not in the best of moods. They're not going to be happy, beaming, charming. And so I'm used to that, and you have to make allowances for that because that's just the way people are, and that's understandable. But I just noticed, really in passing, that this guy seemed a little bit more, you know, guarded, a little bit more suspicious, a little bit more uh, concerned or neurotic maybe than than is the norm. And I didn't think anything of it, you know, because that's just how things are. You just got to kind of work through that. But it was interesting because just a few days ago, I found out uh, from another family member that this guy had gone through something really, really severe, had gone through something terrible. I mean, he was a uh, normal guy. He's working two two different jobs. So a very hardworking guy. And uh, I figured, you know, he was just kind of your, your, your standard hardworking average guy. But I found out from a family member that uh, this guy, a few years back, had been hit by an intoxicated driver, just out of the blue. I guess he was driving on the highway, he was going into an off-ramp, and some idiot, some complete wasteoid, was coming the in the other direction, high as a kite, hopped up on meth or you know, cocaine or whatever it was. And there was a head-on collision, and this guy just had his whole life reshaped. You know, he was in the hospital for a long period of time. I guess he lost uh, the ability to run. His, his legs are held together by pins and rods. And this was completely without any fault of his own. It was almost as if out of nowhere, the universe just pointed down at him and said, I see you, and I see where you've been hiding and I'm going to come and get you. And when I heard that, I was really touched because I said to myself, man, that's incredible. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having to go through that? Can you imagine having your whole world turned upside down in an instant over something you had nothing to do with, over something you didn't do at all? And it made me feel very grateful. It made me feel very grateful because... I said to myself, man, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm a guy that's been uh, all over the world many times. You know, I was on active duty in the military for a good five years. I was in all sorts of precarious, dangerous situations. I, I never got so much as a scratch, not even a scratch, nothing. And yet here's a guy driving on the highway and he's nearly killed, literally nearly killed, body crushed to a singularity, by some scumbag driver. And I guess the story is, you know, he tried to recover. I mean, he only recovered a little bit from the insurance. And of course, you know, you can't go after these uh, these types of drivers civilly. You know, even if you sue them, the judgment that you get against them is worthless because these, these guys, uh, they go to prison, they have no money, they have no resources, they have nothing. So it's essentially, it's a, it's a, you never really recover from, uh, uh, from that financially. And once I heard that story, it said, okay, uh, this makes a lot of sense now. Now now I can understand why 
a lot of these things got these bills got unpaid why a lot of these things didn't happen the way they should have happened it makes a lot of sense and i started to really respect this guy a lot i started to really have a lot of respect because this guy remember he never said anything to me about it he never brought the subject up once never complained never whined never said anything and so i said to myself you know man you just don't know you never know what load of bricks that the other man has to carry. You don't know what crosses the other man or the other woman has to carry. You don't know. You know, you don't know. And I thought to myself, that's why it's so important, I think, to make allowances for people. Up to a point, obviously, up to a point. Don't take this too far. We have to make allowances for people. And we have to try to see the world from their perspective in some ways. I've said before in this podcast and in my writings and my articles that the first lesson of philosophy is perspective. Is perspective. We have to try to see things from different perspectives. Because if we can do that, it makes things so much clearer. Our perspective is one perspective. And it, it's a valid one. But if we can say the same if we can see the same thing from different angles we can get a much fuller approximation of the truth which is always going to be elusive no matter what but at least we can try to approximate it and so that's uh that that's something that's important to to remember to keep in mind you know don't be too quick to judge others don't be too quick to form judgments to be declaratory in your statements about others because you don't know what crosses the other guy carries you don't know and by the same token he doesn't know which crosses uh, you carry he doesn't know but you're not responsible for what other people think you're only responsible for what you think so you should try to integrate that uh, that concept into your day-to-day -day life a little bit more because I always knew it but sometimes experiences you have in life flash things into vividness and clarity in a way that you may not have appreciated fully before. And it's interesting because last night I saw a movie that I'd rented from Netflix that re reiterated the same principle, I think, same principle. Um, and that's how you know when when you're you're being told something by the universe, when you see the same point confirmed by multiple experiences. And the name of this movie was, uh, the English translation, the title was called The Measure of a Man. The Measure of a Man. It's a French film from uh, 2016. And uh, I think the French title, if I can look here and see what the French title is, I think it was um, uh, La Loi du Marché. La Loi du Marché was, I guess, the original title. The director is uh, Stéphane Brisé. And apparently it, it won some awards, I guess, Best Director at Cannes uh, Festival. Very, very good movie. It's one of those one of those understated, wonderful little French dramas that I love to watch. I mean, the French, you know, you have to, yeah, at least for me anyway, I just love these movies. I love discovering these little French movies that, uh, that are these life lessons, you know, these very penetrating, very, very profound uh, statements about... Uh, the human experience or human relations or uh, human personalities that you just don't get in American movies anymore. You just don't see them as often as uh, as we used to maybe in, uh, since the 70s because Hollywood now is always going for the big budget. They're always going for the big budget for the big payoff and they miss a lot of these little pleasurable little films. Anyway, uh, it's a very good movie, highly recommended. And the, the gist of this movie is you've got an unemployed factory worker. You know, very, very solid. And we get a sense right from the beginning, this is a very solid guy. He's got a very impressive countenance. He's got a, a face that has character in it. Uh, he's got a, a very... Uh, you can just tell this is a guy that's a man of, uh, a man of integrity, a man of substance, as I, as I would say, a man of moral fiber. He's got a, a family. He has a, a son who's disabled. 
And just little things. The director is able to show this guy's character with just little scenes. You know, there's a scene where he meets with some friends and they want him to participate in some sort of lawsuit against their former employer. And he says, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I just, I'm done with that. I want to move on. You know, there's a psychological cost to dealing with that nonsense. And I'm ready just to move on. And that's just one of of many little scenes in there where we're formed a picture of this guy's personality. But the gist of the plot is the guy eventually has to take a job as a security guard, as a security man in one of these mega stores. I don't remember the name of the of the uh, the store in France. It could be the French equivalent of a Target or a Walmart, you know, one of those types of places. And he's forced by necessity to take a job as a security guard, and he does it. And he has to catch shoplifters. And the movie's moral crisis comes about by his experience in doing this job. He has to take people into the back room, interrogate them about what they did. And in the process of doing this, he begins to doubt maybe the moral rectitude of a lot of what he's being told by his bosses and by his uh, other co-workers and uh, uh, it's a, it's a very subtle, very very profound movie, and I liked it a lot. And uh, we can agree or disagree with the conclusion of the movie, but it still makes us think, and that's I think the important thing. It makes us think of the point that I made earlier, which is that you don't know the crosses that other people carry, you don't know what's going on in other people's lives, and that's why we need to get out of our own minds, get out of our own heads. Stop being so self-centered and selfish and thinking that everything is about us. If someone cops an attitude to you, if somebody gives you a hard time, it may not necessarily be because of anything you did. It may be because of something going on in their lives or something that they have in their past that uh, made them so. And try to keep that in mind. Try to keep that in mind. We don't know what other crosses people carry and we should try to see the world from the perspective of others if we can that will conclude this podcast for today i'm quintus courteous good night